combining two foods that we know and love with the help of home economist Sylvia Kong. It's pizza waffles this morning. We love this idea. Good morning to you. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's great to see you. We usually see you on the other side setting up for all the celebrity chefs, but you make everything look so wonderful and we're going to dig into something. So is this something, is this a food trend that you've seen and caught the buzz? Definitely. It's been around for a while and for some people it's the first time they've ever seen it. So I think waffles are so versatile. Breakfast, lunch, or supper, especially when you run out of ideas right. or you just want something fun for the kids to eat or they can make it themselves. Okay, so you've made uh, yours yourself, which of course you would. So we have the frozen variety here, but it's yes. better to do it with dough. Yes, so we're going to make a pizza dough, a pizza waffle, and we're going to actually show three different ones. So you're going to be doing the building. So I've got my waffle maker mm -hmm. heated up here and well oiled. So what I've done is rolled out some pizza dough. Now, let's say you don't want to make the dough yourself. Sure. You can buy it, like, for example, Bridgeland Market sells it. A whole bunch of places sell dough, or you can buy frozen bread dough. So we're going to start with that one. I'm going to get you to start building, and you can put pizza sauce, tomato sauce on it. You can use pesto, whatever you like. So mm. the nice thing about this is that you can customize it. Okay, so, so it isn't a waffle dough, just to clarify. It's right. a bread dough. A real bread dough. And let's say you want to use biscuit dough, like from a roll in the uh, refrigerator section of the grocery store. Make you it easy on yourself. Too. Got it. So from scratch or uh, convenience, whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you build that, uh, you know, whatever you Do you, you go like. cheese on both sides? Yes. And yeah. the, the key is not too many ingredients because it tends to ooze out and the ingredients should be fairly dry. But, you know, at the same time, when cheese and sauce oozes out, it crisps up on the edges. And There's who nothing doesn't wrong love with that? cheesy edges. Exactly. Now, you used, did you use canola oil to oil your uh, waffle iron? Yes, that's right. So you need a fair bit of oil so that it doesn't stick. Because who enjoys wedging that waffle out of the machine afterwards? And clean up. Yeah. And so no it, fun. It could be meat-free. You can put all kinds of things in it. Okay, so. I'm making this one for Andy, so oh, okay. So we're going, we're not going meat free. Oh, okay. He would be very unhappy with olives? me. I think so. Okay. Well, well, I let's know spice he likes this extra heat. Oh, that's extra that's going to be a hot mama there. So <laughs> it'll heat him up on this cold day, right? <laughs> we're making Andy sweat this morning. Should I go more cheese? Why uh, not? A little bit more cheese. Okay. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, that sounds great. And so, oh, well, let's give them a little bit of pizza spice here. Why not? You know, my definition of pizza spice is opening up a jar of dried oregano and basil oh. and just, just sprinkling that on for yeah. some extra and flavor. And now I've gone and made that mess that you told oh, me not no, to make. Oh, no, no worries. That's going to make it taste extra good. So you don't even really have to seal the edges, and all you do is close it up. So we're going to let that cook for about five, seven minutes. And we don't... Mm. You don't have to press it too much, oh. or else it oozes out really quickly. <laughs> Thank you. This is, you know, this is, this is a working with learning. me in the kitchen. This is what it is. Lots of corrections. So we've got okay, a finished plate right here. We mm -hmm. just put a lecture, I just put a little extra Parmesan on it. And you can actually have some dipping sauce because That's too smart. much sauce, you know, in here is a mess. But then you can add as much sauce as you want. Love it. So over here, we've got some kimchi fried rice. This is a great way of using leftover rice. Now, sticky rice works the best. And then I pureed some kimchi, fried it up, and then put those into the waffle maker. Now, you can get them really big, or you can have them small, square, whatever you like. Delicious. And so I just made up some kimchi mayonnaise. So it's basically mayonnaise with pureed kimchi. And then you can garnish it with a little bit of extra Sesame seeds, if you like. Sorry, is kimchi the spice or on the cabbage? It's usually it's a, cabbage. It's a, like a jar of fermented cabbage. You can get that in the oh, Asian Oh, you the cabbage. Yes. Oh. But you don't, you don't have to do the fermenting. You can get it out of a jar. Yeah, way easier. Perfect. And over here, we have a hash brown waffle mm -hmm. with cheese and green onions. And, um, you know, you, you can, what I do is I just buy the hash browns. You can grate those potatoes if you like. Yes. You can use sweet potatoes. Um, I find that the shredded potato works better than the cubes of potato. Is that just potato? Potato. Oh, sorry. Egg yes. and cheese and a little bit of green onion. You can Delicious. add some salt and pepper. You can add hot pepper flakes, whatever you like in that. And so to finish it off, I've just fried up an egg. That is a beautiful yeah. thing. And then we've got some prosciutto here. Mm. You can use bacon. You can even put cube ham inside that. And you've got dinner, lunch, or supper. Voila. The beeper went off. Are we ready? No. You ignore no. the beeper. Ignore the beeper. When is it ready? Well, you, you take a peek. So you go ahead, take a peek. Okay, and let's see. take a peek. So it probably needs another two minutes or so. Okay. But the thing, the thing is, you can make these ahead of time. 
let's say you want to have a party of pizzas, and keep them warm in the oven. Yes. So everything to me on here, the table, looks, it tastes better warm, not cold. But I don't know, there's some cold pizza lovers out there. That's the truth. Cold rice, mm, not so much. Okay, you want that warm, so stick it in the oven. And thankfully we have a commercial break before you get to dig into your pizza.